What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the POCO F5 and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM. This is the version 796 I guess and the build date here is of 26 July 2023. The latest update as of right now and it still does not include the OSS vendor and stuff so there is no MIUI or ANX camera or like a camera so we are still getting a Gcam by default here. That is how it is but the ROM stability has increased drastically and right now it is a totally daily drivable ROM that I can say. And by the way guys if you want to flash the Evolution X ROM on your device you can watch the flashing guide from the video description. And if you're confused about updating the ROM let me tell you that updating the ROM is one of the most easiest part because whenever you want to update just download the latest build from the Evolution X's website. After that just put into your TWRP recovery, go to install. Just select the ROM zip and just swipe to install and reboot the system. That's how easy it is to actually update the ROM. You do not need to wipe anything in the process. So first things first, let me show you the about section. We have the Android version as Android 13. The Evolution X version shows as 796. The code name is Paris and for Marble, this is for Poco F5 of course. And this is an official build again. The security patch here is of July 5th, 2023. The stock kernel is the 5.10 Akane Plus. The build manager is of course Joe and the build date is 26th July 2023. In the system settings, there is a system updater from here. You can check for updates if you want. And in the gestures, we do have the system navigation gestures. In the settings of it, we have the pill length and the radius customization. If you make these to the fullest for both of the length and the radius, this is how the pill bar will actually look like. And we have the advanced gesture options right here. And there is the extended swipe action. It's raining outside guys, so sorry for the background noise. And we have the extended swipe action right here, then the long swipe action and stuff. You can customize between all of these options. So huge, huge customizations. Again, we have the IME button space. You can customize it to default, narrow or hidden. There is the swipe to invoke assistant if you want to use that. Two button and three button navigation is there. And while I'm going back, just notice this back animation appears. It looks so beautiful over here if you're noticing. And we do have the one handed mode and stuff, no issues. And we have the quick tap action. And there is the take screenshot, the access your digital assistant and all these other features for the back tap. And if I do back tap, there is the quick tap detect. We have the quickly open camera option. Then we have the press and hold power button action. You can customize that. Swipe to screenshot is also working fine. There is the share, edit, delete and the Google Lens feature in case you need all of those. Talking about the home screen, this is how it looks like for me because I have customized it. And by the way, you are still getting this is the Evolution X launcher and there is a split screen freeform etc modes on the recent panel there is the screenshot the google lens and the clear all button and on the bottom it shows the ram usage and in here we have the miscellaneous settings we have the hidden and protected apps that is to lock particular apps for the launcher and of course there is the app lock in the security settings i'll show you that later on we have the suggestions you can disable it from right here in the recent you can enable the memory info the screenshot lens clear all buttons and the shake phone to clear all feature is also there in case you need it in the app drawer we have the themed icons app search bar icon limits in drawer and we also have the home screen layout customization. There is a double tap to sleep, wallpaper scrolling and zooming, parallax and the single page center and a lot more Google kind of specific feature for music search and stuff is there. Let me go back. We have the icon pack and in here you can change the icon packs if you want. The notification dot options are there and we have the icon size, font size, max lines for app level and the four themed icons. Now to the left of the home screen, we do have the Google's Discover page. It is working perfectly fine and it's very smooth experience everywhere. Swiping up will get you to the app drawer and swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel. By the way, the quick setting panel still stays dark like this even in the light theme. Widgets and stuff, yes, I have added a couple of widgets like this subscriber account widget which is working and the battery widget is also working fine and tapping on it does work perfectly fine as you can see. The animations and stuff of the widgets are working and in case you are wondering about the quick setting panel let me show you you can edit and add multiple toggles over here there are a plethora of options but let me show you which toggles i have added i have the wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth toggle the flashlight auto rate night light and the hotspot google home and the battery saver the screen recorder is also there you can enable this hevc and there is the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time also there is the show touches and the other features let me go back, we have the ambient display, heads up, always on display toggling option, the dark theme and the data saver, the refresh rate, I have put it to auto but force 120 hertz if you want but with the auto, there is no lag at all in the quick setting panel, even with 120 hertz, no problems that I have faced. And we have the reboot toggle, the do not disturb, nearby share, airplane mode. By the way, there is no lag anymore, quick setting panel, as you can see, no lag at all, it is perfectly smooth, no issues. By the way, it still does have the Google dialer and stuff and with that, this is how it looks like and you can switch the output device from here. Also, there is the normal hold and stuff other options and there is a record option as well. The Google dialer does announce it. 
but I'm not really sure if it announces on the other side and it does have the Google's messaging about stuff if you want to have those yes it does have all the Google specific stuff so no bloatware here at all and if you are wondering about the 5G yes I have Geo 5G over here so obviously the 5G speeds are really insane in my area and yes 5G is working perfectly fine without any issues in this particular ROM. Talking about the basic things, yes, the DNO Info shows as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any problems. The IR Buster here is also working fine. And the safety net, yes, it is passing right out of the box, so there is no problems with banking apps. I have used banking apps, did not face any problems. And there is a setting for the Google Photos unlimited backup in the customization settings, which I'll show you later on. But you do get the unlimited Google Photos and videos backup here. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, you do get this particular camera. This is a Gcam Go kind of looking. And there is a video option as well. But you cannot really change the video resolution with this. And there's a portrait mode and stuff and the filters you can enable if you want. And let me show you the front camera. Yes, the front camera is actually working fine. It is perfectly exposed, I would say, in your face or something like that. So if you are taking a selfie, this is a really good camera. And there is a face retouch option and stuff. Then we have this save selfie as previewed option. And there is a lot more other options for the rear camera as well, like timer. Then we have the same grid type, save location, etc. options. But let me tell you, it won't give you a like MIUI camera kind of experience, but it does have the HDR mode, the night mode, etc. options for normal photos. But yeah, it is no way close to MIUI camera optimization that I can say. But the overall experience of this particular camera may not be as optimized as MIUI camera, but it is a decent stock camera on the latest Evolution X ROM. By the way, I have also installed a Gcam. This is the AGC kind of Gcam. And with this, I will show you guys a comparison with the normal Gcam Go, which is present by default, or normal Gcam, which is present by default, and this particular Gcam AGC. And the side-by-side -side shots that you are seeing here is compared between this particular Gcam and the stock camera of this particular ROM. And again, I'll try to make a separate video about it. You guys, if you guys want it, let me know down there in the comments. And with this, the most special thing is we do have the video settings and in here we can shoot up to 4K 60fps and that is just huge because we do not even get that option in MIUI. So right now you can shoot 4K 60fps with this particular Gcam and I'll show you a video example that I have already taken and now you are seeing a video example which I have just shot with 4K 60fps turned on with this particular Gcam. You guys let me know how is the quality of course it won't be in 4k for you guys because i'm shooting this whole video in 1080p 50 fps but i'll try to zoom it in or crop in for a couple of seconds so that you can get an idea about the 4k quality in this particular video example Let me jump into the settings. We have the Evolver right here. There is the customization. I'm not going to show you everything because it's like pretty similar to how it was. There is a theme style and stuff. Color source you can change, the luminance, chroma factor, etc. Dark theme you can schedule it and turn on the pitch black mode. We have the headline and body fonts. And again, plethora of fonts we do get, including with the nothing dot font, one plus font, Roboto, and all other things. Then we have the icon packs and stuff, then the signal icon styles and the Wi-Fi icon styles are there as well. Then the icon shapes are there as well. Even the nav bar style you can customize. In terms of status bar settings, we have the clock and date style customization. Even the battery icon styles are there like the landscape iOS style and there is the landscape origami style, the newer option. But yeah, the landscape iOS style looks really good for me. So I have been using it with that. But there is a lot more battery options in case you need that. The status bar icons options are there, headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons you can enable. Then there is the show 4G instead of LTE and all these things. This HD icon is showing up because it is having the Volti, so that's how it is. It doesn't show Volti straight up over there, but it only shows that HD. We have the notifications here. We have the use app colored background for the D ticker and the in call vibration options. Let me go to the quick settings. In here, we have the combined quick setting elements and you can change it to however you want to, the quick setting panel style pretty much. Then the battery style and stuff for the quick setting panel and the brightness slider position and the style you can actually change from right here if you need that then we have the haptic feedback animation styles quick setting for text etc in the power menu we can enable the advanced reboot and stuff and all other options that you got seeing over here 
and we have the gestures in here we have the brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar then the click to partial screenshot long press button toggle torch all these functionalities are here in the lock screen we have the ambient music ticker edge lighting and the lock screen clock font you can change plethora of lock screen clock fonts are here there is the always on display scheduling option in case you need it and we have the media cover art customization ripple effect fingerprint authentication and error vibration in the buttons we have the nav bar style and we have the show volume panel on the left side the volume panel timeout part of volume control and all these functionalities are here in the animations we have the charging animation the screen of animation the power menu animation you can customize in the miscellaneous settings we have the pocket detection and this is a new feature earlier we used to have a lot of accidental wake ups whenever you are in a call or something if you put your device in your pocket it used to wake up accidentally but right now it has been almost fixed with this particular function so that is just great even in UI, that accidental wake up problems usually like annoyed me but here i do not see that problem anymore so that's a huge plus for this particular evolution x update we have the parallel space so you can have two accounts for apps like whatsapp then we have the game space you can add any game to have the overlay then the smart pixels and stuff launch music up on headset connect unlimited google photo storage backup that is actually you have to enable if you want to convert google photos backup and unlock higher pc games and then it'll fix poof then we have the ignored window secure flags and the other block sensor and stuff wake lock blocker alarm blocker usb configuration you can set it to file transfer for convenience now let's talk the battery settings well this is how it looks like and we do have the optimization profiles and here we can set it to performance browser camera dialer game streaming application etc then the battery optimization per app you can do if you scroll down more we are still getting the design battery capacity current battery capacity the charging cycles and the battery temperature and i love this particular feature my device has 76 charging cycles right now my battery life that i have been getting is estimated about nine and a half hours so that's about 10 hours of screen on time you can say and about 60 hours of standby here it shows so that's a long time of standby and even the combined use it's about 16 hours so amazing battery life that i have been getting in the health section well it doesn't show anything for me because maybe i haven't charged fully but yeah the battery life over here 10 hours of screen on time is almost really really good no problems whatsoever that i have been facing with the battery life and the fast charging here is also working perfectly fine no issues in the sound and vibration settings this is how it looks like we have the media called it's volume controls and the volume panel looks like this you can expand it and change the output device from right here let me go back we have the live caption the media vibration haptics ringtone vibration pattern changing option then if you scroll down more we again have the per app volume control dial per tones in call sound the screen locking sound etc silent and medium mute option the newer feature and in the me sound enhancer we get this direct logo so this is pretty much the me audio direct and the scenes you can change to smart music video or voice then we have the youth edition or other presets for the headphones i have been using it for the youth edition the sound quality via the headphone jack and even bluetooth and the earpiece the speakers everything has been really good we have the choose preset option you can set it to bass booster or something like that if you want it and we have the enable hi-fi option as well we also do get a clear speaker option in the display settings we have the brightness level adaptive or auto brightness extra dim in the lock screen we have the control from lock device that's for the google home controls double line clock always show time and info is the always on display pretty much in the advanced settings we have the pickup option so pulse notification on pickup or you can select a wake device on pickup whichever you need and we also have the hand wave the pocket mode and stuff and we have the always on option that is the always on display again and we have the dark theme again the display size and text the night light live display and you have the color calibration here as well and the colors you can set it to booster if you want and with the natural even it looks good and we have the allow window level blurs the minimum and maximum refresh rate you can change it from right here and we have the smooth display the low power refresh rate if you enable battery saver it will switch the display to 60 hertz that's really good the double tap to wake is there prevent accidental wake up is there and we have the wake up on plug and we have the full screen apps refresh rate per app you can choose if some apps are behaving weirdly you can set it to 60 or 120 hertz in the wallpapers and styles we have the change wallpaper option by the way i have been using a fresh walls app over here and in the change wallpaper section there is plethora of evolution x wallpapers even there is a papers app of evolution x you should be knowing that 16 colors for basic and wallpaper colors we are getting the dark theme and the app grid and we have the 6 by 10 app grid up to and the system icon packs the fonts etc you can customize from here as well in the security settings in the settings of it we have the quick unlock scramble pin layout power button is locks and enable pin privacy all these features then in the fingerprint settings we also have this touch to unlock anytime if you disable it it will only unlock the device whenever the screen is awake right now let me just quickly set up the face unlock and here i'll set it to when swiping up unlock screen 
and there is more option and in here you will get the app lock let me show you inside protected apps there are plethora of apps that you can lock so any app that you can lock from here in the settings of it we have the hide from launcher and the redirect notification option over here now let me show you by double tapping anywhere you can lock the device and this is a really handy feature and if i just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand as you can see the pickup gesture is actually working fine and sometimes you have to just do a lift up just like this and as you can see right now the pickup gesture has worked perfectly and if i tap the favorite scanner as you can see it unlocks it's a really fast unlocking experience let me show you one more time and here i'm just tapping the favorite scanner just notice how fast it unlocks so no problems it does give me a haptic feedback whenever i tap the favorite scanner and it's a really good experience and double tap to wake is actually working there is the google home controls and you have to tap and hold for these shortcuts and here as you can see torch i can turn it on or off and in the lock screen as you can see this is how it looks like the animation i mean again the fingerprint scanner is working perfectly fine no problems it's really fast experience now let me show you the face unlock for that i have to swipe up and here as you can see it unlocks let me try one more time so yes face unlock is working perfectly fine again now for the app lock, this is how it looks like. You have to tap the fingerprint scanner to actually unlock the app. And if I tap it, as you can see, it unlocks the particular app. So app lock, fingerprint scanner and the face unlock, everything is working perfectly. Now let me show you by opening a couple of apps. And by the way, this test to a website does show me about 120 FPS. So no problems whatsoever with the high refresh rate here. And Twitter is now X. So congratulations to Elon Musk, I guess. So here we have the Play Store and stuff and even Twitter scrolling if I show you it's very smooth experience no problems whatsoever this like the Poco F5 is handling this custom ROM like pretty much a knife on the butter experience over here and it's a very fluid experience while switching apps like switching to any app or like taking video or something like that it's perfectly smooth everywhere in the UI no problems whatsoever that I have faced in this ROM it's a very very fast experience no issues whatsoever. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test. In case you guys want to get an idea about the overall UI performance, how the Poco F5 is handling the latest Evolution X ROM. So I would say definitely I have been getting amazing, amazing experience over here with the Evolution X ROM. The only thing that I do miss right now is gonna be the MIUI camera. If that was there, I would have been like one of the most happy persons. But yeah, otherwise, even without the MIUI camera, it's a really great experience. I'm not exaggerating guys, I'm just loving this custom ROM on the Poco F5. Share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest Evolution X ROM, how it's running on the Poco F5. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD and Dick signing off for today. I'll be watching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.